Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to welcome you to this uh, discussion panel uh, as part of uh, WEF uh, for uh, the MENA region held at the Dead Sea. Our session's uh, topic uh, is a topic that is of importance uh, to each uh, family. Leila is at uh, the last year of school. What uh, is she going to specialize in? Sami also is going to leave his work and to find another job. Rami is telling his mom over WhatsApp that he is going to accept a job outside and will not come back home. All these are examples not only related to Layla, Sami and Rami as examples of individuals, but it is the story of the future of their countries, their economies and their societies. The fact uh, is that uh, demographic growth has uh, made it uh, that uh, half of the population is uh, youthful without, and four, one fourth of them does not have uh, jobs. This is a theme that is of concern to all, everybody throughout the world and uh, we will be focusing on, uh, on some, some general trends uh, before going into some specific themes. My guests today represent uh, various scopes uh, uh, and uh, stakeholders uh, they are, and I start on uh, to the left, Rada Wali, the Minister of Social Development in uh, Egypt, and we know the problem of youth unemployment uh, and its risk to social and society at large. Uh, Ron Bruden is the founder and chair of the Education for Employment uh, Foundation that has uh, trained uh, uh, 28,000 uh, young people in uh, Arab countries and has enabled them to be part of the job market. Uh, Nidal al qatamin is the Minister of Labor of the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan and he is keenly interested in jobs, of course. John Haley is the CEO of Towers Watson, uh, which is a specialized consultant on human resources and management. And Tariq Sultan Laisa is the CEO of Agility and he represents the private sector uh, that is uh, in need of various skills and we will be asking him about how he finds uh, skills and how he attracts uh, them particularly when it comes to the national skills and in the GCC area. Uh, we will be touching upon three areas, demographic shifts and structural unemployment in the region and we will be dealing with advances in technology and uh, their impact uh, across industries and the uh, creation of new jobs. And the third uh, theme will be how to deal with knowledge-intensive economies in our, G in our region and whether all the developments are uh, uh, made uh, in parallel, uh, Ms. Rada, we know that uh, the demographic uh, growth uh, has uh, led to a lot of unemployment. Uh, at the same time, we need to know that the education has uh, quite, uh, quite developed in the region. Um, illiteracy has been uh, combated, and we have uh, many holders of uh, high diplomas. And in spite of this, we find that unemployment is quite prevalent amongst the youth. And it's seems that unemployment is quite chronic. Yes, ma'am, I agree with you that uh, many investment has taken place uh, in the education sector that led to a, grow in, a growth in the number of educated people and the uh, university graduates. We have huge numbers of university graduates. But in Egypt, for example, where we have 90 million uh, people and 50% uh, of them are less than 20 years old, this represents uh, a uh, uh, quite a wealth when it comes to the job market. However, uh, the youth unemployment is uh, higher than the average unemployment. Uh, if it is 12.8%, generally speaking, amongst the youth, it is around 28%. Uh, and this is quite uh, a source of concern. concern. The years of uh, the years when uh, children, uh, sorry, uh, graduates of the universities uh, spend uh, looking for work is three to five years. Uh, and this is also another source of concern. Another problem is that there are available jobs on the market. Uh, 
and there are uh, private uh, uh, there are uh, private businessmen uh, that are seeking uh, uh, workers and the workers who are seeking jobs however uh, how to match uh, the needs uh, is the problem uh, and uh, that is because of the very of various reasons uh, the skills acquired by the youth are not necessarily those uh, requested or needed by the private sector in 2015 in particular another problem is that the young people uh, in Egypt and in other Arab countries are reluctant uh, to work in the private sector. Why? Because uh, there is this uh, prevalent culture that uh, the public uh, employment uh, provides more uh, social insurance in terms of uh, social uh, uh, funds and pension, uh, uh, etc. And this is not available in the private sector. We also have another problem. The informal uh, sector is growing and uh, there is no protection in that informal sector. The growth of this informal sector, in spite of the fact that it uh, provides uh, job opportunities uh, as well as the other uh, two elements, uh, in addition to the fact that uh, families encourage their children to work with the government rather than with the SMEs and the private sector in order to reduce uh, uh, risk exposed to, all these factors represent uh, main and major uh, challenges to the government in Egypt and in other uh, Arab countries. Another challenge is how to involve women in the job market. We talked about 30% of unemployment amongst the youth. What is even more serious is that the women contribution in the job market is around 22% only out of the job market. And this is another source of concern. And we know that work is a source of decency uh, for every person and would allow us to take out of poverty. Ron, to follow up on what Rada said, there are uh, university graduates uh, who do not find job opportunities. And we know that this is the case uh, throughout the world, not only in the Arab world. But it seems to me that uh, uh, the more uh, or the higher the diploma is uh, or the new university degree is, the more difficulties he finds to find a job. How can you explain that phenomenon? Uh, sir? With the universities and trade and industrial centers to teach them how to better place their youth in jobs. Uh, there's a university we're working with right now in Morocco. There are 27,000 students, you know of it, but I'll leave it unnamed for now. Their placement rate is 18%. 82% of their graduates do not get jobs. We are now working with them, and we believe we can bring that down to 60% on a placement basis. But the numbers are just astounding. The opportunity is great. Uh, in Egypt, for instance, if you were able to create women employment so it matched male employment, you'd create $34 billion, according to the World Bank, of additional revenue per year. Mr. Katamin, when we talk about demographic growth and uh, the fact that the youth, uh, there is a youth bunch and that there is... Uh, uh, a mismatch between the uh, education and the job uh, market needs. Uh, let us add to all this uh, the problem of refugees in Jordan. Uh, then what would uh, be the concern uh, on the part of the Jordanian government? Uh, well, ma'am, believe you me, that uh, the uh, political uh, situation in the Arab world uh, uh, has impacts on employment and uh, economy in general. We need to have uh, true uh, genuine strategies that deal with this issue, but uh, the political uh, environment uh, uh, represents an impediment to that. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the global economic crisis that started in 2008 uh, uh, and then it was followed uh, by the 2010 uh, beginning of the Arab Spring in Tunisia that, and expanded to uh, Egypt, Yemen, and Libya, and then it was launched in Syria in a bloody manner later on. All these uh, impacted Jordan and affected uh, uh, any efforts to control unemployment. And there is lack of coordination amongst Arab countries to control unemployment and to find uh, or to achieve uh, real integration, uh, to fill out the gaps uh, between this, uh, the gaps in the mismatch. Uh, all this uh, has affected uh, all Arab countries, including Jordan. Jordan has passed through very serious conditions because of the uh, uh, stability situation and we uh, have become uh, uh, quite attractive uh, to the neighboring countries because of our stability uh, in comparison to the neighboring countries so anybody who requires uh, stability would come to Jordan uh, and that has meant that uh, 
percent to twenty percent was uh, the increase in the dog uh, in the uh, population of Jordan every eight to ten years. So if we look about, uh, we look at uh, the incoming uh, workers uh, figures. Uh, as we can say that we might absorb some Asian workers, but this is uh, uh, and, and of course we try to follow human rights uh, equations and uh, international agreements, but we have to be aware that there are five sensitive issues that have affected unemployment, uh, particularly amongst the youth in Jordan. First, uh, what uh, the uh, what Rada has said uh, that uh, uh, it is not very attractive for people for young. Uh, people to work with the private sector. Uh, the public sector employment figures were very high. However, uh, to change the culture, uh, to encourage people to work in the private sector was quite costly. We needed to build bridges with the private sector to encourage the young to go to the private sector. Another problem is that the, we have lack of uh, qualified, skilled, trained uh, uh, youth in uh, the various sectors. So we need uh, training uh, institutions. And this should be part also of the academic uh, university programs where our uh, students uh, are can gain uh, new uh, skills. We have 33 universities that in Jordan that do not uh, focus on these extra uh, qualifi qualifications and skills. A third problem is that uh, the uh, contribution of women uh, is very low, and we needed to have uh, uh, in promotion poli policies uh, to involve women in the various sectors of the economy. In, uh, under very dire circumstances. Uh, however, we were able uh, to cooperate with the private sector and we were able to provide incentives uh, to the private sector to absorb uh, these additional figures. Another uh, serious issue in Jordan is that uh, we focus uh, in uh, the private sectors uh, on uh, main urban cities. Uh, uh, we have four main cities in Jordan and uh, the majority of the private sector companies are in those four cities, which means that there is uh, unfair distribution of the job opportunities and this is a main challenge in Jordan and we need to review it in order to be able to create new job, true, true jobs, uh, genuine uh, jobs uh, and uh, to be able uh, to employ even university graduates. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John, uh, the minister has just said that uh, in the Arab world uh, the Arab private sector needs to um, exert uh, many efforts to convince the youth to work in the private sector. What would the private sector uh, avail to the youth in the future in order to promote them or encourage them to come and work with the private sector? Or is it because the public sector gives them a lot? Is this the real problem? Uh, yes, so I think um, the, the, pub, the private sector is one. Let me just first comment about uh, some surveys we do. Um, around the world, and I think these, these also apply to a large extent uh, in uh, Middle East, North Africa. We talk to companies about um, what kind of trouble they have uh, finding uh, workers. And right now, if we talk to them, about a third of companies say they find it difficult or extremely difficult to hire workers. And a third of the companies finding it uh, difficult seems, seems reasonably high. But when we break it down, we find it, it actually varies quite a bit. When we ask companies how hard it is to find university graduates, fewer than 20% say that that's a problem. When we ask them about hiring um, employees that are identified with critical skills, almost two-thirds of the companies say that they have trouble finding that. And when we ask about finding critical skills in the high growth economies, almost 80% say they find trouble. So the look and private employers and what they're looking for and what they're trying to get, it actually varies and you have to look at it specifically at to what they're looking at there. Um, I think there are two things that are, I would say are affecting um, Middle East, North Africa particularly. And, and one is this, uh, an issue of demographics. So. We all know that the population of the world is growing, but it's in fact growing quite unevenly. Um, the areas where there's a lot of jobs being created in a lot of the OECD countries, not only is the population not growing fast, I mean in Europe the population is declining, in particular the working age population is seeing some significant declines. 
even China from 2015, their working age population is going to decline. On the other hand, you have places like Lebanon has the highest population growth rate in the world. Um, uh, Jordan and Qatar are also in the top five. When you look at the places though where the high growth is, of course, that's not, that we're getting this talent mismatch. So Towers Watson has done some work with a group called Oxford Economics in England. And um, we took a look at what this means for uh, talent and the need for talent in the world. And we find that even as soon as say 2021, places like the UK and Germany will have talent shortages of five to 10% but places in the Middle East and North Africa will be seeing talent surpluses, more workers than they can profitably find jobs for, of between two to 8%. So these are pretty significant uh, differences that, that we're going to see. In addition, a phenomenon that I think is bigger right now in say uh, the OECD countries is the effect of longevity. Um, you know, we have people living longer. Of course, OECD countries, the um, um, average life expectancy is over 80. Uh, in Middle East, North Africa, it's up to 75. People are living longer, um, they're in better health, and the jobs may, maybe are not quite as arduous as they used to be, so they're in fact able to work, to work longer. Um, when we talk to people in, uh, we just did a survey in Middle East, North Africa of about 2,600 uh, um, workers and ask them uh, were they going to work longer than they had been in the past, uh, people had in the past, 52% said yes. That number, by the way, is significantly higher in Europe, and I think that number will indeed be going up in Middle East, North Africa. So all of this points to, I think, what the previous speakers mentioned is there is some, something of an imbalance, and in fact, as tertiary education improves in the uh, Middle East, North Africa, or indeed even in Turkey, we've seen the same thing. What you find is there's a bigger mismatch because we haven't created as many job opportunities. Tarek, I would like to talk with you about a very specific issue related to the GCC about the job market. Uh, we know that the growth uh, rates are uh, on the increase, uh, but there is also unemployment. And we have noticed that there is another phenomenon in the GCC. The local workers work in the public sector and very few of them work in the private sector. Can we safely say that uh, there are uh, parallel uh, job markets uh, in the GCC countries, including Kuwait? Yes, of course, says Tarek. Uh, uh, the title of this session is The Future of Jobs. Uh, we should have said that no future without jobs would have been an, a more appropriate title to this session because this is what we have been uh, witnessing in the Middle East, uh, the negative impact uh, uh, of lack of uh, uh, work uh, in the vast majority of Arab uh, countries. According to World Bank uh, uh, statistics, uh, there, is around, uh, uh, there is a gap uh, in uh, the uh, job market and we need uh, 100 million, oh, sorry, 1 million jobs. Uh, that will be the uh, gap. Uh, and we have 30% unemployment rate and it is on the rise. Uh, uh, particularly amongst the younger generations. This uh, m leads uh, to extremist extremism. I have read in a newspaper a job vacancy in a given country uh, that I shall not name, $600 a month uh, with uh, covering the expenses of marriage. And we know that in other uh, uh, you're talking about uh, extremist groups that uh, put out such ads? Uh, yes, yes, of course, that's what I meant by it. Uh, uh, if the situation continues as is, uh, it means that uh, we will have uh, the largest talent pool for extremists to draw out from. Let me follow up on this issue about the public-private uh, uh, sectors. Now you are working in the private sector. Uh, the majority of workers in uh, the uh, private sector, uh, are they uh, coming from uh, Kuwaitis or from other countries? 
The problem that we have in the Middle East is that that uh, public policy leads uh, to various problems. We have uh, two problems, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, where, uh, which should be put on the side because their performance was quite excellent in this uh, field. So with the exception of these two countries, we can say that the majority of Arab countries are from seven, uh, rank 70 to 150 in terms of uh, uh, ease of uh, access or uh, procedures uh, for the business uh, environment. Uh, the WEF has another statistics uh, that indicate uh, the following, that uh, there will be $45 uh, billion dollar, million dollars a year in addition uh, to the income if uh, the business environment uh, is improved. And this, uh, as I have said, that uh, is 45 billion, sorry, not million uh, dollars uh, um, as value added. Uh, all these countries that uh, have uh, like uh, uh, SMEs uh, and uh, these SMEs uh, can uh, provide around uh, one uh, tenth uh, of the job opportunities. However, when we have uh, bureaucratic issues and red tape, uh, this means that uh, uh, SMEs cannot grow, which means that countries that require more uh, employment and uh, cannot benefit from the, these uh, uh, available uh, uh, people who can work because of bureaucratic issues. This is an issue. In the Gulf countries, the investment in education is, is very good when compared to international figures. However, the outcome of education is not appropriate to the job market. The question is why? Why is, so? why is it so? The majority of uh, the young people in the uh, Gulf countries uh, are studying at excellent uh, universities uh, and they uh, find uh, job opportunities with the public uh, uh, sector even if their uh, ranks are not very high. The question is why should they go to university if they're going to work with the public sector and stay there? All right, let me turn to uh, Ms. Wali before we finish the first half of uh, this uh, session. Ms. Ghada, uh, I have a question for you. The young people are going to the public sector and the public sector feels that there is job security. However, it is creating this uh, social problem, which is lack of competitiveness, uh, which means that uh, the public sector should stop employing and should encourage the, uh, the youth to go to the, public se uh, to the private sector. How can this be solved? What is the environment that is required to promote and encourage uh, public, uh, the young people uh, uh, to go to the private sector rather than going to the public sector? And how would that help uh, through the SMEs? تعاني من هذه المشكلة إلى عدة تدخلات هناك لسنوات طويلة We need to have uh, long term interventions uh, the, policy, uh, um, the policies adopted by the government were to call upon the young people and work with them uh, and the minimum wage was in uh, policy was implemented in the public sector and not in the pub private sector which means that uh, uh, in the public sector, uh, the civil servants get uh, higher uh, wages than uh, those in the private sector, which means that the minimum uh, age uh, wage uh, rule is not implemented in the private sector. Another point is that uh, we need to provide the training for the youth uh, in order for them to find job opportunities in the private sector and the private sector to find uh, the qualified youth. Uh, we also need to have an enabling uh, business environment to the SMEs and we should uh, encourage entrepreneurship uh, culture that would uh, support uh, businessmen and uh, would uh, read, lead uh, to more uh, uh, employment in the formal economy and not in the informal economy. Uh, SMEs, if they are supported, they can uh, be part of uh, the uh, production chain and would lead to the um, incre an increase in uh, the exportation. In order to provide uh, opportunities for these uh, thousands of millions of hundreds of people that enter the job market, we need to have a better efficiency of investment and distribution investment. The majority of investment in uh, Egypt is in the north, while 27% of our poor people are in uh, uh, 
uh, the north areas and 67 of the peer people in the south uh, southern areas and there isn't enough investment in the southern areas not only the uh, quantity but also the quality we need to have it labor intens intensive investments in order to provide jobs to the largest uh, numbers of people and we need to uh, for the government to provide incentives for this labor intensive uh, uh, policies of uh, uh, the private investment uh, to focus on uh, uh, highly dense uh, areas another issue the government investment uh, should focus on uh, Suez Canal and uh, project and uh, the construction uh, uh, sector that uh, are uh, sectors that uh, bring uh, a lot of uh, job opportunities to the people we we should focus on training as I have said but uh, remember that uh, our uh, young uh, young people go to training that is not very expensive uh, and it is not internationally recognized while we need to uh, provide them with skills to work in the OECD areas and they need to have uh, uh, skills and uh, a job uh, culture that is completely different uh, investment in education investment in uh, training because training is shorter than uh, education and uh, we know that education is our main uh, objective but it is a long term issue so we should focus on training which is short uh, term and it should uh, provide skills another issue is to, to provide incentives to work with the informal uh, sector because there isn't uh, enough uh, protection to the informal uh, sector workers the private sector practices sometimes uh, uh, pull away uh, the uh, workers because uh, they offer low jobs or low wages and they don't provide the uh, social insurance all the time another issue is to have uh, awareness uh, between amongst all uh, the uh, workers sometimes ask their uh, uh, um, the um, employers not to enroll them in the uh, social schemes because they want to have more uh, wages and uh, this should not be accepted the government should impose the law on the private sector enterprises that work in the formal economy to uh, ensure their workers and to provide them with the minimum wage uh, all right so this means that we need to have wide uh, um, uh, adjustments uh, to the job market and uh, to to uh, reduce uh, uh, the uh, unemployment uh, rate and uh, various uh, speakers have talked about the need to uh, increase uh, women contribution to the job market and to have a miss uh, not to have a mismatch between the job opportunities and the needs of the uh, private sector. Uh, let, we will be talking about the necessary skills uh, that uh, the youth should have and we will cover this issue after uh, the promotion, uh, the ad. Thank you. اهلا بكم من جديد الى هذه الندوه الحواريه لتلفزيون دبي ضمن فعاليات منتدى الاقتصاد العالمي للشرق الاوسط وشمال افريقيا هنا في البحر سنتحدث في الجزء الثاني عن الكاريجن we're talking about the qualifications of young people in the region in order to find good jobs in the future and this question is addressed to you John of course what do you give young people in a few days in short sessions what is it that you teach them that will allow them to find jobs whereas others thousands of others do not find jobs and you have succeeded <laughs> it's okay I can do the translation and then I'll cut it in the edit ah it's not our secret we'll share it willingly with anybody uh, <laughs> we work backwards in each of our affiliates and these are standalone foundations that work I can't read that <laughs> it's too far away Each of our affiliates, and we're in Egypt, short, Morocco, Yemen, Gaza, West Bank, Tunisia, Dubai, and, and, uh, and Saudi and growing, each of our affiliates makes the decision on their own as to what jobs are needed. And so they will work with industry. Our board of directors work with ministers, ministers of social solidarity and others to figure out where the jobs are hidden. And we found that there are a couple of key opportunities that work very well. Like the most successful program we have, we started in Jordan six years ago. 
and it teaches youth how to work. It's called the Soft Skills Program that we built with McGraw-Hill, and it teaches these young, inexperienced kids how to write a resume, how to interview, critical thinking, leadership, public speaking, work ethic, productivity, time management. And we deliver this in up to three months, and what it really does with these kids is it gives them self-confidence. They leave our program believing that they can succeed, and because they do believe they can succeed, they do. It's a phenomenal that I never expected. Uh, we shoot for 85% of our graduates getting into the labor market. The Tunisians don't understand that because they've been placing 100%, which we didn't expect. Uh, the Yemeni are at 38% because it's Yemen and things are really tough there, but despite everything that's going on, we're still placing in Yemen. Um, we focus on training women. The majority of our graduates are, yim are women. Once again, 70% of our graduates in Tunisia are women going down to the 30s in Yemen. But we offer simple, quick courses that are needed and vetted. We work with employers. Oftentimes the employer, and we have over 2,000 employer partners and growing rapidly. They're our partner. They help us figure out what jobs are needed and they do the hiring and, and more and more nowadays, they're assisting us in reimbursing the cost of the training because they're getting value. They see that an EFE graduate stays longer, works harder, and is more connected with the job than those that haven't gone through our training. We also have been growing in the area of micro enterprise. And we've been running competitions where people submit business plans. And from those we call out the best, we provide them with funding. We also provide them with mentoring. Mentoring is a key component, not only in the, the area of enterprise, but even for graduates who work very closely with our graduates after their graduates, and we have very powerful alumni associations, and those alumni associations are a key part of enabling their kids to grow. And as we all know in this region, WASTA, who you know is very important, and we are creating our own WASTA. Our graduates are now bootstrapping the current graduates and getting them into the labor force. It's an amazing thing to happen and there's a tremendous amount of loyalty to our old, to our new graduates from our old graduates and that's moving it forward. One of the things that hasn't happened yet and they're working on is there is not the ability to provide student loans, which I think is a key component. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York in a poor neighborhood and I had student loans. It enabled me to get through college on a normal basis and that, ena that further enabled me to go to graduate school with scholarships. This region needs student loans and we're working on systems to make that happen. And two years from now when I come back here, I'd like to report that we have enabled student loans to start and we're looking at doing a program in probably Tunisia and launch that. And if it works well, and I think it will, it can really change the landscape of education. You can come in and take a course, it'll be self-sustained, it'll be market-driven, it'll get paid back by the employer. <laughs> Mr. al uh, uh, Ron uh, just uh, talked about uh, the problems that, that young people are finding, uh, those who would like to carry on with their studies, uh, and uh, the problems uh, of uh, student loans, uh, which is uh, quite absent of our region. But in Jordan, you have uh, some success stories uh, in the business uh, environment of small uh, enterprises uh, in IT. And today, His Majesty the King uh, talked about uh, the Arabic uh, content, uh, 70 to 75 percent of this is due to young people in Jordan. Uh, but uh, there is a favorable environment in Jordan. Can you talk to us about this uh, success story in Jordan? Mr. al -Katamin. yes. Uh, 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 we talked about the fact that uh, in most uh, regions of the provinces of uh, Jordan, for example, in Jordan, uh, the uh, focus is on the major cities. So uh, people who are looking for jobs, uh, they have to uh, go and find jobs uh, uh, and, and finance uh, themselves. And uh, we have already given uh, loans uh, to about 26,000 people, uh, uh, loans of about uh, 20 to 75,000 dinars. Uh, and uh, these uh, loans are directed to uh, students at uh, uh, women, uh, at uh, also re rural areas, and at uh, uh, faraway areas. But that is not the solution. When we're talking about Jordan, uh, our situation is improving, and uh, we're making progress uh, in order to link up with the private sector in order to reach these faraway regions so that we reach everybody. But I, I think that 
uh, with the with the unfortunate situation in four to five uh, uh, neighboring countries uh, uh, prevailing at the moment, we're talking about 100 million Arabs who are living in very difficult situations, in war situations. They, we couldn't have a labor strategy if we didn't have a coordination at horizontal level and also integration with the other countries. But unfortunately, this is impossible in view of the prevailing situation. And uh, we've tried uh, uh, to uh, solve this problem over the last decades. And now we're talking about 100 million young uh, Arab people in the year 2020 who will be looking for jobs. This is extremely serious. It's extremely dangerous. There's no integration. There's no coordination. We're not being able to control uh, migrant workers. Uh, a lot of things uh, are lacking. And this is a reflection of the unfortunate political situation. In Jordan, we are making progress, but we have huge challenges. As a labor minister, I can uh, find four or five uh, uh, jobs, but I have so many nationalities in Jordan that are going to be competing with the uh, uh, Jordanians because there's no social security. They're coming from countries where there's no security, no stability. They are here. They are trying to find jobs in any which way. They need to survive. They need to eat. So it's a very difficult situation, and there's a lot of competition on jobs, and there's no other solution except if we find uh, an Arab system in order to solve the problem, the problem of unemployment in coordination with all the countries, except especially the countries that have today opportunities where they have investments, such as uh, the UAE, such as, uh, as Saudi Arabia. But there has to be horizontal and vertical coordination so that we can control this unemployment situation and solve it, because this is something that's keeping us awake. The other thing, and this is very important, where there's a lot of uh, imbalance, uh, most countries think that uh, those who can solve the unemployment problem are the ministers of labor and the ministries of labor. And it is the state in the constitution of most countries that is in charge of labor, and it is the ministry of labor. But it is all the sectors, all the ministries that have to modernize themselves uh, so that they can adjust the uh, product with the out uh, with the outlet so that they, the product that's coming out of universities can find a job. And this has to be done. Today, Minister of Health can talk about uh, unemployment in the uh, health sector. He is responsible for the health sector, not the Minister of Labor. And this is why this is this is why we haven't been able to control the situation because it is it is up to everybody to contribute. Another question addressed to uh, Mr. John Haley. When the minister talks about the very difficult situation in the region, and this is a, an almost impossible equation, can we find a solution without thinking about innovation? Isn't innovation something absolutely essential in order to look differently to the various tools that are at our disposal? In your company, I think you have somebody in charge of innovation. Is that not true? So uh, yes, I do think uh, I, I do think innovation is something we need to look at. First of all, yes, we do have somebody in in charge of innovation. Um, actually, she's um, she's not so much in, she's not so much there to um, come up with all the innovative ideas herself. Mm -hmm. What she is there with, and 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 I want to mention this because I think it's uh, it's helpful in thinking about what we need to do um, in an economy. She's there to make sure we have the right infrastructure so that we can take the ideas that people have and we can pair when people have different ideas on how to create new client uh, solutions or technology or something like that, she pairs them up with somebody who helps them develop a business case, who helps them pilot test it, and then who takes it forward so that we can de decide whether or not to invest in that and to develop a product. And I think similarly in an economy, what you really need to do is not to try to have something that's governmental that provides innovation. What you need to have something governmental is something that helps the, all the uh, people in the economy to take their ideas and to help build them into successful enterprises. I think, um, you know, I, I, I recognize that there are very important functions that uh, government provides, and so the public sector is something that's important to any well-functioning economy. But when you're really talking about growth and creating the maximum number of jobs for the future, you really need to have a thriving private economy. And so the major function of government is not so much to provide jobs for people, 
but to provide the conditions under which jobs can be created. And I, I guess one thing, and we, we've sort of been dancing around this a little bit, but just to make sure it's obvious, the job problem in the, in the Gulf uh, to create jobs for is, is largely a youth problem in a way that it isn't anywhere else. So in Europe, about 35% of the people are under the age of 29. In the Gulf states, that's 52 uh, 57%, excuse me. And, and in fact, in uh, Qatar, 50% of the nationals are under the age of 15. So when we're, talking about when we're talking about addressing unemployment, we're talking about addressing youth unemployment in a way that we aren't anywhere else in the world. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Tariq, we talk about uh, growth in uh, technology and uh, we talk about uh, the unemployment crisis uh, the, uh, uh, in the youth circles. Uh, a lot of jobs are going to disappear. To what extent are we uh, prepared uh, for this, uh, uh, for this uh, change? Uh, you said that there are a lot of alternatives that are bad in the region. So let me talk first of all about uh, innovation. What we uh, need in terms of innovation is first of all to facilitate uh, procedures, streamlining procedures. Uh, 20 countries uh, are at the top of the list because they are favorable to the business environment. Do they have a, an unemployment problem? No. So I think uh, the question uh, that we should be asking today is uh, each uh, government in the Middle East has the possibility to streamline the business environment. Uh, but uh, we can do what we can, but we need, uh, we, we need investment, uh, we need uh, what we need is not investment, we need to streamline the business environment. This is what is going to solve the problem of unemployment. I think this is a very important thing. The second thing, uh, I think 70% uh, of uh, graduates, of university graduates uh, in the Gulf, it is a huge rate. But let's not forget about those who work in the private uh, sector. Uh, so supposing we're at a soccer uh, soccer match, uh, uh, who is going to win uh, the match? Uh, this is how we're going to deal with it in the future. This is uh, this could be solving uh, our problem. Is it, the moderator is saying is it a social problem? We have this problem in Jordan, uh, uh, Your Excellency. We were asking people uh, in Amman what should the women do, and very often uh, we got uh, answers uh, that were uh, quite shocking, uh, and uh, numbers show that uh, uh, women are absent uh, from uh, the job market. Uh, how do you deal with this issue? Policies have to focus on uh, women empowerment. Uh, for example, let's say that there is uh, a kindergarten and a woman could go and work at this kindergarten and she could work there very comfortably. But there are a lot of enterprises in uh, 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 Jordan and there is a campaign now in the sector, in both sectors, the private and the public. Uh, and there should be one standard, whether we're talking about the private or the public sector, because the labor law is to be applied to everybody, and there shouldn't be any discrimination between the two sectors. Uh, talking about uh, the private sector is new in the Arab world, because there is no public sector that takes more than 5% of those who enter the job market. Uh, uh, because. <coughs> But the private sector is the motor, is the engine of the uh, economy, and there should be a focus uh, on finding real jobs in the private sector with the same privileges that uh, exist in the public sector. We should empower women, but unfortunately, uh, salaries are different for women and uh, men. Whereas, wherever you have people, try to find, try to, to, to find out what's the uh, rate of women to men. Uh, we haven't been encouraging uh, women employment. Uh, we have three issues that are very sensitive. To, first of all, to have uh, 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 daycare centers in enterprises, uh, in uh, most enterprises. There sh has to be daycare center in uh, companies uh, and there has to be uh, uh, 
people caring for, for children. Se secondly, we have people with special needs. Uh, we are focusing also on this uh, and on jobs for women. We're talking about women employment. Uh, we have uh, increased uh, the participation of uh, women uh, uh, from uh, uh, 15 to uh, six to 46 percent in 2004. And we have to take into account the, the freedom that has uh, to be given for women when they are being employed, and some flexibility has to be afforded. We have to focus on this. In uh, uh, Europe and all developed countries, they have been able to solve this problem. We have a situation, a political situation, that is impacting this situation. The uh, Mr. Ron. Do you think uh, that in the Arab uh, region, uh, uh, governments uh, uh, believe uh, that uh, it is important to work in partnership with the private sector and with organizations such as your organization in order to approach the issue of education? Do you feel that uh, uh, governments are stepping back from uh, this monopoly that they had on education? I've been doing this 10 years. And 10 years ago, I would have definitely, oops, thank you. I would have definitely said that governments do not. Governments, in a sense, were our adversary. Mm. But I've seen a shift, especially in the last three or four years, that governments are now coming to us and working with us, and where they look at us as an ally, and we're working with their universities, working with their training centers. There's, a, there's an awareness that they have a problem, and they look at us at assisting them to solve the problem. So the, the, the situation, I think, has changed radically in the last 10 years. And, and one thing I wanted to point out, it's been mentioned here about the 100 million jobs by the year 2020. The 100 million jo jobs does not solve the unemployment <coughs> problem. It keeps the number exactly where it is today. So it's even a bigger number than 100 million. Just uh, we should be aware of that. It's a challenge. Yeah. But the government, I find, in all the countries that we're operating, are taking a much more introspective, proactive, uh, humble look at uh, things that they weren't 10 years ago. It's, it's a much different and a much more healthy environment. Mrs. Ghada Wali, when uh, Ron says that we will need uh, more jobs and the uh, situation will not change if we carry on as we are, how does Egypt deal with this, uh, with the demographic growth? Um, the problem of mismatch. And we also have the technology, which is going to uh, lead to the disappearance of a lot of jobs, such as in banks. Uh, Mrs. Wiley, we uh, uh, think uh, that technology has uh, its positive and uh, negative effects, because technology allows to offer all sorts of services. First of all, it allows you to work remotely from home, which means that uh, more women will be able to work uh, and are able to work. Uh, and uh, this allows for call centers to be set up. Uh, and uh, these are lo there are lots of jobs in uh, highly populated countries, uh, chances uh, to find jobs for women. Mrs. Sufan, technology, uh, technology sorry, is going to lead to the disappearance of jobs that will uh, give rise to jobs which need uh, better technological uh, skills. Mrs. Wally, yes, you put your finger on the, on, the, on, the, on the issue. Our young people have to learn new skills. They have to acquire skills that will allow them to integrate not only the local market, but also the regional and the international uh, job market. It is important to invest uh, in IT. This is, uh, it is important to invest uh, in uh, innovative skills and uh, the skills uh, described by Ron in order to acquire training uh, in management, in self-confidence. Uh, we have to finance young people and we have to allow uh, young people to find out where the jobs are so that they can access these job markets. Uh, and what is also important is to is, uh, invest in vocational training. We have a new mini
ministry, uh, vocational training and vocational uh, educational ministry in uh, Egypt. Uh, and also there is a new law on uh, uh, public service in order to give uh, a chance to the government to reduce the number of people employed in the public uh, sector and in order to hold to account those who are not being productive and to, uh, to let them go when they are not being productive. And this new law is going to improve uh, the performance of the civil servant. The issue of uh, training and education is very important, uh, but we haven't talked about the, organi the organizations of civil society. Their role is extremely important uh, to give access to young people to, the, to, uh, to job markets. Uh, and media is very important because they can encourage uh, the private sector and they can uh, uh, also encourage the private sector to keep uh, the working and the successful models. But there are uh, models where the private sector that uh, gives a uh, very good uh, uh, job opportunities and opportunities to train and to grow. And uh, there are models that are uh, belonging to uh, huge enterprises in Egypt which have known how to keep their employees and how to attract them by creating a favorable environment. Uh, and uh, governments have to create the favorable, the encouraging, the uh, insensitiz incentivizing in uh, environment uh, and shouldn't be competing with the private sector by offering better job opportunities and then they will wonder why they don't attract enough people. I thank you. This brings us to the close of this session. I thank you, Mrs. Vadawali, Minister of Social Solidarity, Mr. Ronald Blue, the founder and chair of Education for Employment, uh, Mr. Nidal Mardit Katamin, Minister of Labour of Jordan, Mr. Tarek Sultan al AC, Chief Executive Officer of Agility, and uh, Mr. Uh, uh uh, John Haley, Chairman of Towers Watson. We have a few we minutes have. here. We can entertain questions from the audience. There's a mic coming. Hello, my name is Afif. I'm a global shaper from the Beirut Hub. Uh, my question is to anyone from the panels who would like to answer. Uh, my question is, we've been missing the concept of civil society, which employs a huge number of uh, youth in the region, specifically in Beirut and Lebanon, where there's a lot of uh, pressing issues and donations are coming through civil society, but there's no uh, platform to develop skills of youth to actually yeah. excel at that field or excel at that type of industry. So what's your feedback and why isn't it in any one of the calculations? Thank you. Uh, who would like to answer the question? Oile. Uh, you, we have uh, 27, 47,000 uh, civil uh, society organizations. Uh, if two thirds on, uh, of them only is active, they can offer a lot of uh, job opportunities. Uh, we have uh, a new strategy that started about seven, eight months ago, which uh, uh, has divi is divided into four uh, sections. Uh, First of all, uh, the databases uh, in order to give information to everybody about these uh, organizations. Uh, first of all, we have to have uh, uh, we have to to find out what these societies are. We have to allow them to communicate with each other and to network. Uh, secondly, we have to have uh, a law to encourage these uh, organizations uh, to work. Uh, thirdly, we have a fund uh, to finance uh, these organizations uh, to make donations to them. And fourthly, we have uh, to create the, um, uh, the uh, management uh, uh, cadre, and we have to professionalize these uh, NGOs. Uh, not everybody can work in them. We have to teach them how to uh, manage their projects, uh, how to obtain funds, uh, how to fund projects. Uh, we have a number of institutions in Egypt and uh, uh, organizations of civil society which uh, are managing huge projects. We're talking about projects such as uh, the uh, cancer, uh, the Children's Cancer Hospital, uh, which is uh, being managed uh, by a civil society organization which is offering better, almost be uh, definitely better services than governmental hospitals but are in, comp in competition with private sector uh, hospitals. Uh, we have the food bank, uh, we have other um, large uh, organizations which are working in a very professional way and uh, where, where 
very good people are graduating from. Uh, if we create the favorable environment, if we give them the funding, uh, this is going to provide lots of jobs uh, in our society. But in our country, in our region, in spite of the fact that the Arabs, uh, Muslims, uh, that those who live uh, in the Arab region uh, do give uh, money and make donations, but we don't have this culture of donation. Uh, but we don't, we, we give money, but we don't donate time. And uh, uh, very often, private uh, sector companies have uh, limited money, and we find that uh, few people have the time and money to uh, volunteer that their services. In the, the last few years where the um, role of government has diminished, uh, there are a lot of uh, sectors uh, where you will find uh, the civil society very present to fill the gap that was left by the public sector. In the health uh, sector, a lot of services are being offered by uh, civil society organizations. Uh, and. Uh, we need uh, more of that. We need more investments uh, in uh, non-traditional sectors. Uh, we uh, find we tend uh, to help uh, charitable organizations with uh, regard to illiteracy, with regard uh, to Quran institutions. Uh, but uh, uh, we have a lot of charitable institutions, but we need a lot more of the civil society organizations. In some uh, uh, Arab countries, uh, uh, the, if the uh, enterprise uh, itself is going to find uh, difficulty to be set up, uh, there's going to be uh, pro problems. Uh, because uh, very often, the sine qua non is to have uh, a headquarters. Uh, and. Uh, uh, when we're talking about uh, streamlining uh, the business environment, uh, making it easy for companies to be set up, this is going to be impacting on all the sectors without us feeling the consequences. So we have to improve the business environment. We have to have the new laws. Otherwise, we won't be able to do anything. Another question, perhaps? Hello, I'm Ayaf, a global shaper from Airbit Hub as well. Uh, my question is for uh, for the Minister of uh, Labour in Jordan, Mr. Uh, Nidal Qattamin. Uh, as Mr. Sultan mentioned, and for me being like raised and like born, uh, not born, I'm, I'm living in Kuwait right now. And you mentioned something about making the environment, the working environment, more appealing for investors to come in and just open biz businesses. Uh, for me, uh, coming from Erbid, it's 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 uh, we have like six universities in the city of Erbid alone, and we have one hundred and seventeen thousand students. And when they all graduate, they just get out of the country, uh, either out of the country or go to Amman to work because all the private sector are there. So what, what, what is the government doing to, to make the, the people of Erbid staying in Erbid instead of going somewhere else? Thank you. All right, thank you very much. <coughs> I shall answer you in English since you asked the question. Right. Basically, you, what you're saying, uh, two parts for your question. Number one is um, how would you be able to find a job opportunity in Erbid rather than just coming to Amman for it? Which is true. This is what exactly I was saying at exactly. the beginning. In developing world, in the developing world, the concentration of working forces are usually centered around the capitals. And about the outskirts, even of the capitals, they're deprived of the job opportunity. It's not fair for a Tafiri to come and find a job at the same rate of uh, uh, or salary as the one who's actually within Amman uh, district. So this is an issue that has to be addressed. It has been addressed lately within the government of Jordan by opening up industrial zones in almost every governorate outside. And now with the investment laws and bylaws that we've just established, we are in fact encouraging all sector with a lot of incentives to go and open up uh, whatever uh, they could at those remote areas in order for all professions to be able to actually work at their place. The second part of your question is you have six universities in Arbit. Let me just tell you one thing, that the universities in the third world countries are not contributing at all to anything related to the educating or, or the education of, of 
uh, graduates of how to seek employment and how to work to find jobs for, of their own. They have no ability whatsoever to actually be able to uh, uh, immediately uh, transitionally move smoothly into the uh, la labor market. They're not. They're just a teaching institution. They're nothing else. And unfortunately, we have to really work on our universities to make sure that they are part of the society and they should be able to host within the area that is actually hosting them, the opportunities for those graduates who graduate from those universities. The, the work, the time allotted to us, and uh, you can follow up with the, follow up uh, these questions with our speakers outside uh, this hall. Uh, thank you very much for your attendance, and we'd like uh, to adjourn now. Thank you.